is. I need you to go back there to the tents. Also, parents, get your children. Make sure your children are close to you. We don't want the kids to miss what's going on here up on this stage. We also like to thank God for Pastor Tim Harris. Let's give God praise for him. And First Lady Tanya, will you help me stand on your feet and give God praise for these people? We want to, the Bible says to give honor to whom the honor is due, and they deserve honor. I think I know you don't want to, but I'm doing it because I want to. I thank God for you, Tim and Tanya. You're doing an awesome work. Let's do it. You say hard fixer, hard fixer. He is a hard fixer. Hard fixer, hard fixer. He is a hard You say. Thank you. 
doesn't need our praise, but he deserves it. Oh yeah, let's not be arrogant. He doesn't need our praise. If we don't praise him, the rest of right now. But he deserves our praise today. He deserves our worship today. He deserves for us to lift up his name, but he is great. And greatly to be praised. God is great. And greatly to be praised. Hallelujah. So for that, Lord, we worship you in spirit and in truth. And we let the whole world know that Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord. I know y'all hot, but um, I can't slow it down right now. I got a little bit more in you. I need, I need to get my voice together. Y'all give me two seconds. I love you all too. I'm so happy to be here. Anybody excited about Jesus today? That's the crowds I like to sing to. I don't, I don't like to sing to fans of mine. I could be hoarse, I could be sick, I could be in a good mood or in a bad mood. But Jesus lovers, I could sing to you all day. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. So we're going to sing about Jesus. And I hope that don't get on your nerves. I hope I don't hurt you. And we're going to brag about Jesus for a little while.
Crusade was not about just having a concert. The crusade was not about Marvin Sapp or Ty Trivets. The crusade is not about Tim or Obadiah Harris. This crusade is about one person. In his name, is Jesus. But nothing in life matters if he doesn't get the glory. We can talk about what we've done. We can talk about what we have. But if we're not talking about Jesus, nothing else matters. And I just want to take just a couple minutes and talk about Jesus. Yes. You know, we talk about Genesis 1 and 1, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And a lot of people never get over to the book of Colossians chapter 1. Where it says all things are created by him and for him. 
and by him all things consist. A lot of folks never get over to John chapter 1 where it says in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And it says there again all things were made by Him. And a lot of folks don't recognize who He is. Because they have a tendency to sell him short. Because they think that Jesus is just a man. When you get to know him, you'll recognize that he's more than just a man. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 52 and 10 that the Lord made bare his holy arm. And then he goes into Isaiah 53, verse number one, and says, Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For you to know God, the only way you're going to know him is to know the arm that he stretched from heaven down. And he took that arm and he wrapped that arm in human flesh. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, the God who at sundry times and divers manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son. And that one verse, God who sundered times, look at somebody say many parts. Many, many, many parts. parts. And the word diverse manners means many ways. Somebody look at somebody on the other side and say many ways. Many, many ways. ways. And so what the Bible was saying that in the Old Testament, God spoke in many parts. One time God would show up and it might be the face of God. Another time God would show up and it might be the hind part of God. It might be the hand of God. It might be the finger of God. And then it says that he showed up in the Old Testament in many ways. One way that God would show up was by a pillar of fire. He would show up as fire in the nighttime, but in the daytime, he would show up as a pillar of cloud. At nighttime, God was fire, but in the daytime, God was water. But when you get in the New Testament, the only way that God shows up is by Jesus. And the, the Bible says in the book of Colossians chapter number 1 verse 15 through 17, it says that he is the image of the invisible God. When I was in China, I was at a restaurant and I seen this thing that was standing about yay high and about yay wide. And I said to the man, I said, what is that? And he looked and he said, that is Buddha up in heaven. What I was talking about was the silver machine, which happened to be an air conditioner. What he was talking about was the little doll on top, which is a Buddha. And he 
was wondering, I guess, how I didn't know who Buddha was. Because he thought I should have been able to look at that image of Buddha and know that that image of Buddha on earth was the same as the Buddha, but God wanted to put a face on so that when you look at him on earth, you know that he's the same God that's up in heaven. Look at somebody say, not a different God, but the same God. And when he stretched his arm down, you don't look at his arm and think that's a different God. You look at that arm and know that it's the same God. And that if his arms got me, then God's got me. Somebody real quick, put your hands together. <laughs> there was a man, a great man from this city who graduated from Chillicothe High School. And he's become one of my heroes. His name is David Canfield Smith. He's a gentleman that when you Google, every time I've Googled his name, the first thing that comes up is he is the inventor of the icon. That he's the one that has the patent and came up with the idea of creating an image, putting that image on a computer screen, and you click on that image, and when you click that image, the whole program opens up to you. And, and, and so you put a W on the screen, and you click on the W, and the whole word program opens up to you. You put a P on a P icon on the screen, and you click the P, and the whole PowerPoint program opens up to you. You put an X on the screen, and you click on the X, and the whole Excel program opens up to you because within that icon is access to the whole thing. My Bible says that Jesus is the image of the invisible God. And that word image is from the Greek word icon. I'm sorry, and, 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 and I appreciate the man from Chillicothe High, but before he came up with the patent, God already had the idea. And God's idea was that if you click on Jesus, you don't open up part of God, but if you click on Jesus, everything that God has to offer is available to you if you just call the one name. And that's why a little further down in Colossians 2 and 9, he said, In him dwelleth, talking about Jesus, all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. So that when Jesus was walking around, he wasn't part of God. He was all of God. You open up the Old Testament and it starts out with in the beginning God, that is the word Elohim. And then you keep on going in Genesis 12 and he talks about the Almighty God. And the Almighty God is El Shaddai. And you keep on going in Isaiah, and it talks about the Most High God, El Elyon. And you keep on going, and you visit in 22, and there you see Jehovah Jireh, the Lord is there. And you keep on going in Psalm 23, and you see Jehovah Ro'ai, the Lord is my shepherd. You go to the end of the book of Ezekiel, and there you see Jehovah Shema, the Lord is there. But when you step into the New Testament, 
You go into the New Testament, and the Bible said his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means he's God with us. Somebody say it again, not part of God. He's the arm of God. He's the image of God. And when you say his name, so glad I don't have to be confused. I don't have to call Jehovah Rapha for healing. I don't have to call Jehovah Zitkanu to save me from a battle. Then let me close out by talking a little bit about me. Some of you know, and I have my mother's book here. I was going to read if I spoke last night, but just want to share a word with you, but when I was eight years old, on the operating table, I died. My dad came out, who was an x-ray technician, and told them, Mary, they lost him. But she didn't get shook. She said, Obadiah, God told me something was going to happen. But the last thing God said he is not going to take my baby. Mary Harris dialed Pastor Conley's number. Mary Harris dialed Cletty Netter's number. And they begin to pray. And they begin to pray in the name of Jesus. And when they called that name, life was in his name. Somebody lift your hands and shout life. life. If there's somebody out there that needs life, I hear what he said, call unto me and I'll answer. He said, open your mouth wide and I'll fill it. Let me tell you a story. I was on a plane coming back from New York because God stopped me from getting on the plane whose engine blew up about a minute or two after takeoff. God blocked me from getting on that plane. And when I got on the plane that God had me assigned to get on, just before takeoff, there was a woman sitting there and she said, when we take off, can I hold your hand? And she used the terminology. She said, I'm not trying to be fresh. She said, but can I hold your hand? Because I was on that other plane whose engine blew up on takeoff, and she said, I didn't think we was going to make it. And I said, you can hold my hand. And we took off, and once we got airborne, I broke my Bible out. And when I broke my Bible out, she said, sir, maybe you can answer me a question. She said, I'm Catholic. Hold on now. Now, wait a minute. Now, I, I was uh, saved at Original Glorious Church, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. And um, this woman holds my hand and says, I'm Catholic. But I need you to, if you can, explain something to me. She said to me, she said, me and the nuns get together every Wednesday for prayer. And she said, every Wednesday, she said, when we start praying, we start to feel something happen. And she said, when we start to feel something happen, she said, we start, and she got quiet, speaking a different language. She said, I don't know what's happening. I said, God set you up. Because God didn't check your resume to see what the name of your religion was before he saved you. If you want the Bible thing, the Bible way, you don't have to join a certain denomination. All you got to do is get a hold of Jesus. Look at somebody say, he'll change your life. 
Yeah, he's not sitting there and asking you what your name is and what your social security number is and all that. He'll change your life. When we started our business, is it raining out there? Good. When we started our business, I remember one time that we had an inspector coming in from Pillsbury. And it poured down rain all night long. And I went into the warehouse about 3 in the morning, knowing that if rain came through that roof like it had been doing, that we would fail the inspection. All night it rained, and they showed up. And we had buckets, about 10 of them spread throughout the warehouse. Rain was pouring in them. We took them in the conference room to stall, hoping God would stop the rain from coming. But God doesn't always stop the rain. They, after meeting for about 20 minutes, said, we're not here to have a meeting. We're quality control. We're not purchasing we are here to do an inspection. We're ready to inspect your warehouse. I walked out in the warehouse. I told uh, one of our warehouse workers, I said, get the trash cans, take them and empty them. And rain was still falling. And every time we got a trash can, we said, in the name of Jesus. And every trash can we grabbed and said, in the name of Jesus, water stopped falling in that spot. And we went throughout the warehouse just saying, in the name of Jesus. Water stopped falling, not a drop fell while they were doing the inspection, but we could look out the door and see that water was pouring outside. But as soon as they turned their back, and begin to walk back into the office area. I turned around and looked, and God allowed the water to just flow from every spot where the trash cans was. And I hollered back and said, get the cans. <laughs> just calling his name. Just knowing who he is. Just knowing that this is not about us. And the message I want to leave to Chillicothe, Ohio, is that this is about Jesus. This is another introduction to Jesus. No matter what you need in your life, if you need that drug addiction broke, Danny, I'm glad you stood up. If anybody needs anything from Jesus, you stand up right now, you put your hands together, you give him your best praise. He can heal you right now, save you right now. He can deliver you right now.